made this cabinet out of XPS foam insulation sheets. This is the sink unit, one of 10 pieces that I'm making for my 1973 Volkswagen camper van. So I chose foam for the bones of this because it's ultra lightweight. This whole unit weighs less than 15 pounds, a fraction of what it would weigh if I built it out of any other kind of material, plywood, particle board, something like that. Foam is mold and mildew resistant. And the way I'm gonna glue this up, it's gonna be able to absorb all the shock that it's gonna have being on the road all the time. So I got this idea from some online videos, but I thought that I could improve on the construction methods that they were using. The first thing that I felt like they were doing wrong was that they were using this to cut this material. And this will cut it, don't get me wrong. But first of all, when you cut with a razor blade, you get a cut like that. It's rough, it's not very exact, it's hard to do really precise corners or turns or uh, plunge cuts and things like that. So what I went with instead was this hot knife. This is from Hotwire Foam Factory. It's their four inch crafter's knife. And what's great about this is that it gives you a cut more like this. Clean, just like it came from the factory, a very exact cut. And I can do all kinds of curves or plunges with it. And while it's not super fast at cutting through this foam, what it is is it's very precise and you can get a a different power unit for it that'll make it faster. So this is the cutting tool for this job. We're gonna stay with that cutting tool. We're gonna set this aside. We don't use this to cut plywood. We're not gonna use it to cut foam either. The other thing that I thought I could improve on is that everybody was using Gorilla Glue to glue these together. And while Gorilla Glue is a great glue and it certainly will hold foam together, it has a few problems with the way that it operates. The first problem is, is that it wants to expand as it dries. And that's gonna do two things. The first thing it's gonna do is that it's gonna take the joint that you have and it might move these pieces around as it's drying. And we don't want that. We want it to stay in the position that we glued it together in. That's the point of gluing it, right? The second thing that it's gonna do is that all that expansion, as it pushes out of those joints, is gonna make a big cleanup for you later. And, you know, we're not trying to do any more work than we have to, right? So the right glue for the job from Hotwire Foam Factory is this foam fusion. This is going to dry and be just as strong as the Gorilla Glue, but it's not going to have any of that expansion. It might even be stronger than the Gorilla Glue. So we're going to go with this glue and this for our cutting. And then the last improvement that we're going to make is that the way that I saw folks gluing these together was just butting the two ends up together, right? Just taking these two, putting a line of glue there, and then sticking these two together. Well, that will work, and it will certainly hold together, especially if you use the right glue. But what I'm gonna do is these finger joints, and then I'm gonna glue them together like that. Look, this is already holding itself together without any glue. What it does here is in addition to, you know, providing more support in the way that this is uh, coming together, it also gives me more glueable surface to work with. So if this was an eight inch joint that I was, you know, making here, uh, doing it this way, I get eight inches of glue, but I get it only get it on one plane. When I join these two together this way, I get 10 inches of glue, gluing surface that it's touching and I get it on three different planes, right? I get it on this plane, I get it on this plane, and then I get it on these planes on the sides here. So those three improvements, the cutting, the glue, and then the way that I actually do my joinery, hopefully are gonna end up with, you know, a superior product to some of the other ones uh, that I saw out online. Now, we are gonna do the same thing to increase the strength of these boards that you see in these other videos, which is you take a piece of screen material just like you would use for your windows or whatever, and you laminate that on either side of this piece of foam with Glidden Gripper or any other you know, primer paint, a heavy duty paint. What that does is it really increases the strength of this, right? Because the foam has a lot of uh, compression strength, but it doesn't have a lot of tensile strength that can be easily bend. Take a look at how much stronger we can make this foam just by laminating the screen onto it. So 
I'm still going to use that method and then in some situations like the inside of this cabinet I'm going to go ahead and do decoupage or in this case I did maps but other people use other paper materials and glue them down to those surfaces. We're still going to do that on some of those areas but then what we're going to do is we're going to take pieces of 8 inch finish grade plywood and we're going to take this and we're going to use that as our lamination material. When we use this as our material, we don't need to use the screen material because this is going to provide that tensile strength that the foam lacks. So that's an idea of what we're going to try to accomplish. As you can see, this is the way that it turns out. Let me show you how I did it. So I'm cutting out these pieces of foam with finger joints on the corners and then plunge cuts or tongue and groove on the places that I have boards that are intersecting. So as you can see there, I have a side board that's intersecting with the top board, and so I use these plunge cuts creating like a tongue and groove there. And then around the outside of the sink basin, I've cut it at an angle in order to have that sink set in there just right. Now I couldn't have had half the precision without using this hot knife. It's a far superior cut to the X-Acto knife, and you're not switching out blades all the time. About the only downside is that it's not that fast and you can bend the blade if you go too fast. Now these finger joints that you see along the corner here and that I'm going to be cutting out of each one of these boards as we go, the way I'm doing this is I'm cutting them out at a particular size and then I'm measuring and marking with X's the ones that I need to cut out based on the other ones that are, you know, that they're fitting into here. So the last piece that you put in is always the most complex piece and uh, you know, I'm going to go through and make lots of uh, precision cuts to, to fit that last one in. And once I have that fit in, I have these three shelves that I'm putting in and I'm not doing any tongue and groove or uh, finger joints with these. And then there's each facet of the, of the sink unit cabinet that I built. Now it's time to glue it up. Just a thin layer of the foam fusion glue on all the surfaces that are going to be touching is all you need to hold this together. Now I put painter's tape on all these corners just to hold those joints together while the glue dries. Now we're going to laminate the sides that aren't going to be covered in wood or other materials. So what I do first is I do the corners and then I cut a piece of screen, put down a layer of paint, put down the screen and then put another layer of paint over the top of it. Making sure that that screen is laying down as flat as it possibly can. Inside of the cabinet I'm going to do the same thing anywhere that I can get my brush in. The next material that I'm going to use is diamond plated aluminum. and This is going to be a 4 inch kick plate along the bottom of my entire cabinet system. I'm just cutting this out with my grinder, cleaning up the edges a little bit and then bending it into the shape that I want. The next material I'm using for these cabinets is this scrap piece of stainless steel. What I'm doing is I'm cutting this out from an old hood vent and I'm using the natural bend in that corner as the bull nose for the front of my cabinet. So once I cut the piece out and then fold over all those sharp edges, I need to cut out the hole for the sink, then notch that hole all the way around so that I can bend those pieces. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to score a circle all the way around that hole so that the steel knows where to bend when I start bending it. Take my clamp, bend it around all the way, slowly moving it up, and then place it into place on the cabinet and start using my hammer to bend that into the shape that I want. Just moving slow, bending it slowly, not forcing it to go anywhere too fast. And then once I get it, I can start flattening it over and then flattening it down all the way around to get the shape that I want. Now the other thing I have here is that that original sink that I have, it's about a sixteenth thick of stainless steel and I need to inset that so that everything lies flush on the top of my cabinet. This is another thing that you'd never be able to do with an X-Acto knife. Shaving off these paper thin pieces of foam would never happen. It looks a little rough but I'm going to glue that sink down in there and you're never going to see that part. So actually that texture is probably good helping me bond that stainless steel to the foam. And as you can see, I can get real precise and get a really nice flush uh, joint between those two pieces. Now taking that piece of stainless steel countertop that I've just cut the hole and shaped, putting it on here. The fit looks really good. I'm really satisfied with that. It's laying pretty close. A little bit of silicone there is going to be just the trick. I like it. 
So the next thing that we need to do is get some of that wood laminate on the outside of this. So we're going to trace it out of 1 8 inch finish grade plywood. Then we're going to cut it out using the jigsaw. Now I'm saving all of these door pieces because I'm going to use those for my door and drawer fronts later on. Then we're going to stain those to bring out the grain. And then we're going to use some polyurethane to get those to be protected from scratches and dents and also just to give them a little bit more sheen. Now the next material that we're going to work with are these topographical maps that I'm going to stain and then I'm going to spray glue and decoupage them into the uh, inside of these cabinets. I'm also going to use them on the outside where I'm not using any other wood material or anything. I polyurethane those down as well. And then inside of this box where I've got the water going to be stored, I'm using a bed liner on the bottom of that area as well as the bottom of the entire cabinet unit where it'll be resting on my wood floor so it doesn't slide around. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to use some liquid nails. And we're going to attach that screen piece to that side, more liquid nails, and then we're going to attach the wood laminate that we have stained and urethaned onto that. Once it all gets in there, it's starting to look pretty sharp. It's starting to look like a finished cabinet. You would never even notice that it was made out of foam. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to glue down that sink basin. So first we put some uh, liquid nails underneath the, the sink piece, the original sink piece, and then liquid nails all the way around. Just smearing that around so that I get a little bit more coverage. Then I'm putting weight down on it and I'm taping each corner down so that it stays in place and doesn't move around or, or peel up from the, the counter. Once that's dried and in place, we got every, everything on it. So we got the maps on this side. I left the back side so far, I haven't done anything to that yet. And then wood, the vent there, and the diamond plated aluminum all the way around. The truck bed liner and the water box maps inside of that. So now that you've seen how this is built, let's talk about how light it is and how strong it is. This is weighing in at just under 15 pounds, but how strong is it? Let's get this thing out of here and then see how it performs if I stand on it. All right, so we got it out. I'm going to stand on it. I weigh about 155, so uh, let's give it a shot. Seems pretty sturdy. I'd say they're pretty strong. So there you have it. Cabinets out of foam. I only have nine more pieces to build for this thing, so uh, hopefully I'll make some videos of those as well. If you guys want to know anything specific about the way that I built this one, leave it in the comments below. Uh, throw me a like or a subscribe if you uh, want to see more of these. I didn't really plan on making this one, I just found a few improvements that I could make to some of the stuff that was already out there. And I wanted to share it with everyone since I got so much information uh, from other people's videos. Thanks you guys for those. Um, we'll see you next time. Hey. Hey, I'm trying to shoot a video. Can you keep it down? It's not even morning. <laughs>